Hey folks, so uh, just going through um, a little project here I'm working on at the moment. This is for a gig that um, I did with Aoife Claffey. She's a visual artist from uh, Cork. So basically I uh, I helped her out with her solo show there in um, St. Luke's Crypt uh, back in early December. And um, essentially what she wanted me to do was to bring um, an audio component to her visual art show. So um the type of audio i suppose is significant um to the team so the theme of the show was uh confessions so um the confessions it was actually called mystical confessions but the confessions themselves were sourced from an anonymous online um kind of like a sort of like a, a survey or application form type thing you know so like you go in you post a confession on it and it's completely anonymous and that's it so that was the source material so once uh if i'd gotten all the source material what um she did was say got a few of her buddies just to record uh, and including herself as well to record themselves talking uh just recording back some of the confessions essentially like so i would have had an hour worth of audio um for the gig itself to play with and uh what i did then was i put kind of like some ambient sounds and drones and stuff um just underneath it to give it some kind of um just yeah just to fill it out a bit so uh yeah so what i said i'd do today is i'm um, just going to go over a couple of things like um how i did my setup live and then also how um how i'm gonna how i'm doing it for like uh this last part of the project which is essentially just to send a binaural mix of um the yeah of the audio that we used on at the show uh to Aoife so that she can use it for just applications it's like so uh like it it'd just be handier to have a stereo mix of the whole thing um rather than be messing with multi-channel audio so um so yeah so this is look it's a, quite a simple project like this is the way it is now now this was general just just exactly this except as you can see it's about just over eight and a half minutes long it was an hour or so um just of all different clips all just kind of edited and high pass filter kind of you know volume automation that stuff and um yeah that was it so basically look what i'll do is i'll show you how i'm doing the the um the binaural version right now uh so essentially what i use here to do my panning is the uh surround panner from ableton for the max for life right so uh you'll see here i have all of my channels first of all they're set to sends only so this just means that the fader doesn't really affect it in any way and um yeah i'm not I, they're on sends only but they're actually not going to uh yeah they're just not going to any of the sends really that's it like they're just they're just there um on sends only just how i like to do it so uh no audio is passing through to our master which is ideal because our master is also feeding outputs one and two which would duplicate everything in outputs one and two um say but not three four five six seven eight or whatever amount of outputs you're using so you'll have like just two outputs that are way louder than everything else because it's being doubled up on so uh yeah so like look you could just turn this down do you know what I mean? Turn down the master fader and, you know, you wouldn't need to have all these on uh, on sends only. I just like to leave all that shit up there on the side just the way it is. And then what I'll do is I'll just have sends only here. And it's just my approach. It's just cleaner for me. I like to do it that way. Um. OK, so in here we have our instrument and then uh, EQ. And then after that, we have a surround panner with an LFO mapped to the rotation there. Right. So that's that's how we're typically kind of getting our sound around the place. Now, um, what I need to show you here is, again, this is for the how the binaural decoding works, right? So I've got eight output audio device, audio output devices called uh, Octophonic here, right? And that is currently a virtual device. So for the actual gig itself, I would have used a Behringer X32 producer, and that has eight outputs on it that are all on eight faders, which is really handy for control over eight individual faders um or eight individual speakers or outputs all on in their own fader and then you can put it on a dca which basically means that one fader rules them all you know so it's like a master out for uh for eight channels which is just quite useful so essentially the way it works on the x32 is i am outputting audio from ableton so i set like channels one to eight inputs on the uh, behringer to not be like the xlr ins um i'm sending to be to be from the computer itself there so what i'll do is i have uh eight channels i'm outputting eight channels from ableton 
and they are going to the eight inputs on um the desk uh or eight of the inputs on the desk and then those eight inputs they feed into the eight outputs that are on it so each one of those inputs gets fed to its own individual output corresponding one and then that gets the audio from ableton to the desk and then the desk to the outputs right so that's how it works all loads of cables uh, looms you know multis just everything to make things nice and easy uh, eventually a digital stage box will be quite handy all right so how we're doing it virtually right uh, this is the fun part so what i'm using is a paid uh, software so um now you can do this stuff with free softwares but that being said the paid one here loopback is just really handy because um it's quite visual and it's really nice i like to you know you got meters on it as well as patch cables you know so there's there's it's just i like it it costs 100 quid but that being said i, I think it's worth every penny uh, if you're a big time user of audio routing um in your computer or whatever so um how i'm doing this is i've created a device an audio device which is called octophonic um even though we're actually technically only doing quad here um this is for my usual setup which is an octophonic i could have just made another one but i didn't i just made i just went with this so i made the pass through device and then i made a corresponding stereo output channel for each uh, of the um pairs say of our pass through device here right so what happens is if i pass through or if i send audio from my daw to these uh octophonic i need to just configure it for stereo outs so what i need to do is i need to basically have all four of these corresponding to four outputs in my uh loop pack um uh device right so they do so like all you have to do is you make the device and then you set the device whoops make the device then set the device as your um your output device that's that's literally it right now uh that's done so anything i feed out of here will show up on our loopback device so you heard a little bit of it there i'll press play here on this again and we'll get some sounds going through there uh, keep an eye on the meters that was all married local family gatherings are happy and fun i guess they just weren't there for me when i needed the most okay so you can see how those four outputs on loopback they're the first four ignore five to eight because we're actually working with quad uh quadraphonic so it's a quad panner here as you can see there's four there so anyway um those are all like they're all good to go um the sound is coming out of them right now this is kind of the next part where it gets a little bit trickier right so what i need to do is i need to send this to another daw just to get it into my uh, IEM suite, which is the name of the uh, suite of Ambisonic plugins that I'm using here, right? So if I go to um, Reaper, Reaper is my boy. So I go to Reaper here, open this guy up. Then what I have on here is an input channel on here, right? So let's just have a quick look here at the, uh, the channel itself, see if we can expand it a little bit more. Ah, that's it, okay. So if we look at this here, we have uh, just a, a typical audio channel on it, right? But the thing is, it, it has a lot of inputs on it. So this channel here, um, let me just check what's uh, got uh, input. It's just... There should be a way of viewing how many channels this has. Uh, the skin is a new one to me, so okay. So we've got 64 channels on here, right? So 64 channels, basically, the reason that is significant is because that's the order of ambisonics that we are dealing with when once we get to Reaper, okay? So at this point with the quad, we're only dealing with surround sound. It's just on a horizontal plane. It's four speakers around the, the audience, let's say, or a listener, <coughs> and they're all at like head height, you know? So... The way it kind of goes is uh, surround sound, horizontal plane, ambisonics is where we start to introduce the vertical axis or what kind of you could say uh, more of a spherical field that we're in. We're in the middle of a ball of sound as opposed to in the middle of like a ring of sound. OK, 
So um, what I like to do here then is I like to, well, there's a few things. The first thing is we make the encoder, right? So this is what takes the audio that we're sending into it. And this is then what makes it, um, or what, what we're telling it, where we're, we're placing it within our spherical field, okay? But what's important before we do that actually is just my Reaper preferences. So I have the input device set to Octophonic. So basically anything that comes out of these channels here, right? That is now input into the first four channels of Reaper, right? So this um this has set my input and then my output is my audio interface, which is just letting me monitor with my headphones, right? So that's the significance here. Um, the next part here we have the multi encoder, right? So this is where we tell this device to send audio. So I am in a quad setup right now. So I know that input one needs to be panned 45 degrees. Now that should be 45 exactly. So let's just fix that. Uh, this should also be one minus 135 exactly. So I'm just eyeballing was done there, uh, 135. And then that once, you know, you can manually drag these around, like, do you know what I mean? Like they're, they are kind of what they are. They're, they're meant to be used in that way. But um, I like to do it exactly because we're dealing with an exact setup. So um, yeah, so in this case, we've got four points. So channel one is gonna be here. Say the listener is here in the middle. Uh, channel one is there, two is there, three is there, and four is here, okay? Um, so yeah, not too out of the ordinary. The, the reason why I went with that exact setup there is because it, it corresponds to the, um, the panner in Ableton. And actually, funnily enough, I've actually made a mistake there. That should be 135 and that should be minus 135. Okay, so there we go. Now these match, match up exactly, okay? So the uh, panner is the first thing, so, or well, the encoder. So this takes our four channels from, um, say, Ableton or via our loopback device and it pans them within a, say, surround field on Reaper, okay? Now at this point we haven't done any binaural decoding, so you know there's there's no real kind of like um, I guess there's no like if you had headphones on and you were sending this, you still wouldn't hear what's going on in channels three and four. You would probably hear what's going on in one and two though, uh, depending on your routing. So that's that's all well and good. The next thing we need to do then is we need to bring back up our Reaper file. So okay, now what I do here is I have a reverb um effect and i also have a delay right so here they are um these are in seventh order ambisonics right which is relevant because we're now into a 360 degree spherical field right the significance i suppose here is that even though the speakers right what we're trying to do is trying to recreate the sound of a room right with speakers in it so the speakers are placed on a horizontal plane identically to how they are. But what I'm doing is I'm reverberating those speakers within a 64 channel ambisonics format. Okay. So that gives me vertical echoes or like, so stuff can, you know, even though there's no speaker positioned above my head, because I'm in a room that has, you know, a ceiling in that, uh, it basically will just reverberate and sound exactly like we're in the room with the speakers. Right. So, what I'm doing here is I've just dialed in some delay and reverb on there. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So next after that then is the multiband compressor. Again, kind of crushed it a little bit just to make it sound kind of cool. And uh, then I've got what's called the scene rotator in here, right? So the scene rotator is, um, as you can see, it's moving around there with my head. So I'm, I'm using this head tracker system by uh, Supperware, uh, which is... There we go. Okay, so now you'll see I'm moving my head around. And uh, yeah, it just, you know, it's head tracking. It is what it is. Um, if I have a sound playing directly in front of me and I turn my head, it starts to be audible. It maintains its position within the field and then it starts to only become audible from this headphone. So just typical kind of stuff. Um, something I can demonstrate there as well. Uh, so other than that, we have this energy visualizer, which don't really need it just kind of looks cool when everything's playing and the binaural decoder is the final one so what you do is on the binaural decoder you tell it what ambisonics format you're doing everything in all your audio here is routed directly to the master as normal 
and then all this does is it it just decodes it down to a stereo format into two channel that can be recreated with headphones so so that's it so i've also put the eq on for my uh headphones dt 990s so yeah so that's that um what i'll do is i'll just show you the head tracking first before we press play on anything else so um let me just put find a something here so i'll take uh be a good example okay we take just some talking here right so i'm going to expand the automation here and uh, see what we got okay so i'll just straighten this out here so that it is there okay and let's just have a listen here this is forced their humor physically they're locked on an unsuspecting victim he told me that i just stopped so i need to move this guy a little bit along okay so if you listen to that everything sounds like it's coming very much from like the left side it's coming out this ear for me anyway uh, and as you can see in the position of the panner it seems to kind of coincide with that so what i'll do is i'll just turn my head and i should be kind of looking at the sound and it should pan for you as well he told me that if I stopped seeing the girl because he didn't like her personality, so we both agreed on a casual thing just for a bit of fun. Turns out he was still with her the whole time and now they're official because lockdown's over. He hasn't addressed it me and completely stopped talking to me until recently, but now it's just chit chat. I kind of sussed the whole thing because her profile and her socials are all of him and her, but he kept denying it. What makes it worse is that we're in the same friend group, but no one knows what went on. Okay, so that's that's just an example of the um, kind of stuff we're doing there with the head tracking as well, right? So I suppose that's that's kind of it, really. Um, now the last piece of the puzzle here is I uh, I actually create um, a binaural feed pl uh, channel, so just call it binaural feed. And what I'll do is I'll take the same feed that I'm sending to OBS there um, for you to hear this. And what I'll do is I'll actually set that as an input device here in my um uh preferences now the way this works right is we go to uh the binaural feed that we've created so we create another loopback device i mean it takes whatever's outputting to reaper which is what we're hearing on our headphones and then it allows me to to output that somewhere else right so what i'll do is i'll set that as an input on ableton uh, i'll configure it so that's stereo and i'll just go to here change it to one two record enable mute it and then when i press record here what it does is it sends audio well when i press record and play <clears throat> it sends audio out of here over into reaper and then reaper so it goes ableton loopback device reaper loopback device ableton okay so you're going out of ableton to reaper and back to this right so this is all very convoluted right and not really necessary to do if you just use the envelope suite of plugins there so uh just in case anyone's interested envelop is uh yeah it's not made by ableton i'm hoping that they adopt all of this stuff um soon but yeah i wouldn't be holding my breath unfortunately um it doesn't seem to be a priority unfortunately the multi-channel audio stuff which makes my sad but um yeah we've got this guy here so this this kind of allows us to do everything that we're doing um say in like via reaper and ableton and all that all just in the one uh all in one ableton session so it really is the future uh my way is only because the head tracker at this point is still it, it actually do you know what i actually think it works now with envelop but uh, i haven't tested it yet so uh, i think i might be scrapping this way soon hopefully anyway because it is convoluted but it is nice though it kind of lets me do a lot of stuff that is like you know outside of this like i can stream to reaper stream to obs stream you know i can do all of the i can do all of these binaural kind of feeds out of here so you know it is handy but probably can be innovated but yeah so that's that's the crack that's um that's how i'm doing this project and i just said i'd share with you uh just in case anyone was interested but um 
yeah, that's it. So take it easy. Have a good day.